This is Starship, SpaceX's massive stainless steel rocket being built and tested in Boca Chica, Texas. It's the first ever rocket that can be fully reused, which means it can be launched and none of the rocket is thrown away. It's also the world's heaviest and biggest flying object ever built, standing at a massive 121 meters tall and 9 meters wide. The main goal for SpaceX and this rocket is to launch people and cargo to orbit the moon and eventually Mars. The first stage or bottom portion called Super Heavy stands 70 meters tall. It offers a whopping thrust of 7,130 tons generated by its 33 Raptor engines. The upper stage, which sits on top of Super Heavy, known as the ship, has six engines, three of which are fixed, and have bigger nozzles that make them more efficient in space. As of writing this script, we are awaiting the fourth orbital test flight on June 6, 2024. Well, almost orbital because they want to make sure that if anything goes wrong, it doesn't just get stuck in orbit. Instead, its course will bring it back into the atmosphere no matter what happens. No one wants a giant steel tube stuck in space uncontrolled, that would be pretty bad. In this video, I will go through the entire timeline of the history of Starship up until now in an easy to understand video. We will cover the little steps and big steps in order starting all the way back in September of 2014 when SpaceX broke ground on the property that is now where the launch site is located. Jumping into 2016, SpaceX started testing the Raptor engine, kicking off the physical development of their next generation rocket. In the same year, SpaceX released the first animation on what this rocket could look like. It was called the Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS for short. They would go on to test a single 12 meter carbon fiber tank to failure on a barge in Bellington Bay, Washington. In 2017, SpaceX redesigned the whole vehicle. This was called the BFR, or Big Falcon Rocket. SpaceX announced that they would use the rocket not only for space travel, but it would also be a possibility to transport people around the globe, much like an airliner. Moving on to 2018, the design was changed under the same name. It was altered to support three rear flaps that doubled as landing legs, two of which could actuate, and two front flaps, which could also actuate. And with BFR, we finally get to our first flight-worthy test vehicle in the Starship program. This is Starhopper. It was meant to be a small-scale or shortened version of the BFR's upper stage. It had three Raptor engines in a straight line with all three fins being fixed. However, before its testing was started, a windstorm tore off its nose cone. After this incident, Starhopper was repurposed to only fly short hops instead of the high-altitude flights that were planned for it, and only on one engine. First, a short tethered hop, then a 20 meter hop, and finally its well-known 150 meter hop on the 7th of August 2019 before being retired to a water tank, camera, communication, and weather station as it still stands to this day. During Starhopper's career, St SpaceX announced another major design change, changing BFR to Starship. This new design included two aft flaps and two forward flaps, and no, they are not fins. Well then, what are they for? What do they do? Well, coming in bottom first, like the Falcon 9, requires a decent amount of propellant to slow down for landing. Instead, you can actually let air do more of the work if you turn the rocket on its belly. This is simply drag doing its thing, more surface area, the belly, slows you down faster. You can then ignite your engines and flip upright at the last second to have as much propellant saved as possible. And these flaps just work as skydiver arms and legs to help control the vehicle through the atmosphere on the way down. And with that, we get to Mark 1. Mark 1 was the first full-scale ship which was seen in Elon's 2020 Starship presentation. It was going to be flown, but during a pressure test to see how well it could hold pressure, it blew its forward dome, and yeah, it didn't do that very well. Test Tank 1. This was a tank, you guessed it, made to be tested. It used better build techniques than Mark 1 and conducted a test to failure, which are on purpose to see how much they can take. Header test tank 1 was a similar objective, but was instead a header tank, which are small tanks reserved for landing. It was also tested to failure. Test tank 2 was similar to the first test tank and was also tested to failure. Next is SN1, or serial number 1. It was built to verify the structure of new Starship tanks and 
build techniques, but instead in a more final two-tank layout. Liquid methane goes on the top and liquid oxygen on the bottom. It failed its cryo test and its aft dome failed. SN2 was similar to the test tanks from before and it survived testing and is still a water tank now at the storage site called Sanchez which is next to the production site. SN3 was f unfortunate as during cryo test too much nitrogen was loaded onto the methane tank causing the oxygen tank below to collapse. SN4, after cryo tests, was static fired with a single Raptor engine. A static fire is when the rocket is held down and fired for a few seconds to test out its engines and systems. After its last static fire before a hop, the propellant lines detach unexpectedly and with that flare stack, the very combustible methane... SN7 was another test tank and was cryo tested multiple times until a test of failure after SN5's hop. Speaking of SN5, it went in to replace SN4 and it completed all of its pre-flight testing until it finally hopped 150 meters like Starhopper. SN6 did the exact same, only faster and more smoothly. SN7.1 was a repeat of 7, but different. It was also tested to failure. SN8. This was the first full-scale ship since Mark 1 more than a year before. It successfully lifted off on December 9th, 2020, powered by its three Raptor engines all the way up to 12.5 kilometers or 7 miles. It successfully belly flopped and flipped using two engines. However, a low header tank pressure caused one engine to shut down and the other engine to eat itself. As the 9, upon being built, decided to take a nap in the high bay building and had to have a flap replaced. Once tested, it lifted off on February 2nd of 2021 and completed the ascent to 10 kilometers, the belly flop, and tried to ignite both engines for the flip, but one engine spat and stuttered, causing it to crash into the ground inverted. SN10 launched on March 3rd and got up to 10 kilometers, as expected, and entered the belly flop. Now this time, SpaceX decided to ignite all three engines and then decreasing to one for landing instead of just firing two, and it worked. Until they couldn't get the engine to throttle for some reason and it hit the landing pad at 20 miles per hour and bounced, crushing the legs. This caused a methane leak and just over 10 minutes later SN11 lifted off on March 30th in the fog where we couldn't see. All we could watch was the onboard cameras which often lost connection. On descent though, just as the engines were lighting for the flip, an engine exploded and then caused the destruction of SM11. Getting ready for the relay. It would have been pretty nice to not launch in the fog SpaceX because that would have probably been the coolest explosion in the entire Starship program. Afterwards, SpaceX decided to skip SN12 through 14 because the next vehicle, SN15, had lots of upgrades compared to the older ships. Despite being scrapped, SN12's nose cone was used as a structural test nose cone, which you can see here as SN15 lifts off on May 5th into the clouds. 
The upgrades did pay off as SN15 became the first full starship to make a soft landing. SN16 was almost the exact same as SN15, and even though Elon was talking about it being used in a hypersonic flight, it was never flown. SN17 through 19 were skipped as well, and SN16 was later scrapped in 2022. We now get to the first super heavy booster prototypes, which were boosters 1, 2.1, and 3. Booster 1 was just a test to figure out how to build one of these, and only lasted for about a week. Booster 2.1 was a test tank made to verify the larger amount of engine mounts that boosters use compared to ships. It appeared to undergo a successful cryo test. There was another Booster 2.1 which was a shorter booster test tank than the first one. They tested it using something Starship fans like myself like to call the Can Crusher, which uses 20 cables to pull down on the top of it and hydraulic pistons pushing up on the end engine mounts on the bottom to simulate the stresses of launch. Booster 3 was the first full-size booster to be tested and ended up firing three engines. With its job done, it was then brutally cut in half out in the open. S20B4, the first Starship stack. Ship 20 was the first Starship to have a full heat shield and all six engines. Booster 4 was the first booster to have 29 engines installed along with grid fins which guide the booster on the way back down. Ship 20 would go on to fire 6 engines and be stacked on top of Booster 4, albeit a bit janky the first time around. But on the second stack, two new huge robotic arms called Chopsticks stacked the pair for Elon's next Starship presentation. There were only a few full stack tests and the biggest were just a few partial crowd tests. Sadly, this pair never flew and for good reason as not only debris getting into the tanks from the tank farm that had just been built, which damaged the tanks, there was a huge lack of reinforcement and probably would not have been able to support its own weight when fully loaded, let alone when accelerating through the atmosphere. S24B7, the stack that finally flies. Booster 7 and Ship 24 had a very, very long testing campaign, with both being over a year old when they finally flew. Booster 7 also went through some really weird stuff, that was the imploding of the downcomer which is the pipe that connects the methane tank to all the engines, and the oopsie when during a spin prime of all 33 engines, the methane detonated. Booster 7 static fired a lot, gradually increasing the number of engines it used. Flight number one finally happened on 420 of 2023 and after blowing a massive crater underneath the launch mount, it managed to lift off with the minimum of 30 engines running somewhat well. One engine exploded under one of the two HBUs or hydraulic power units, which knocked out hydraulic power to the gimbling engines, which caused the entire stack to spin and lose control. Even the flight termination system wasn't powerful enough to blow it up and it only did so when the pressure in the tanks got low enough and they collapsed. After months of repair and huge reinforcements to the foundation, SpaceX installed a new water-cooled steel plate under the orbital launch mount which basically sprays water out in all directions making a layer of superheated st steam when the booster ignites which protects the steel. Booster 9 proved that this worked very well during both of its static fires. Booster 9 had many changes, most notably a vented hot stage ring and the switch from hydraulic thrust vector control to electric, getting rid of the need for the unreliable HPUs. The new hot staging ring is a vented portion of the top of the booster that would allow the ship to ignite its engines while still attached to the booster. This is called hot staging. Ship 25 was the ship that was paired with booster 9 and was pretty similar to ship 24. Ship 25 and booster 9 were modified to be able to purge their engine base to extinguish and prevent any fires. 
flight number two of Starship lifted off with all 33 engines firing on November 18th, 2023, and all 33 engines continued to run absolutely perfectly. For hot staging, all but three engines shut off, ship engine start, and separation, and the booster immediately flips around to head back to its landing site, which was 90 miles off the coast of Mexico. This is where the booster started having its issues when a liquid oxygen filter blockage made one engine shut down, followed by more, until finally one engine exploded, destroying booster 9. Ship 25, however, continued on until a planned liquid oxygen vent started a fire, and when it was almost time to shut down the engines, ship 25 exploded. The orbital launch mount was completely intact, and in a tweet from Elon, he said that the steel plate did its job and needs no repairs before Flight 3. Ship 26 Ship 26 was a ship built with no heat shield and no flaps along with its twin Ship 27, which was scrapped after its common dome imploded while it was being stored. Ship 26 was static fired once at the launch site. And just this past Tuesday was static fired using all six engines on the brand new static fire stand at the Massey's test facility. This static fire stand replaces the old former suborbital launch pads, which have been demolished to make way for a second launch tower. Ship 28 and Booster 10 were the next in line and were flown for the third orbital flight test of Starship on March 14, 2024. Ascent went flawlessly, just like the previous flight. Hot staging. Booster 10 had no problems during its boost back burn. The problems only began for 10 when it entered the atmosphere. It began making huge overcorrections until it was time for the landing burn, where only two engines started successfully. Booster 10 exploded mid-air after that. Ship 28 continued to engine shutdown, followed by its pale of bay door opening shortly afterwards. Ship 28 also transferred propellant from its header tanks into its main tanks, demonstrating to NASA that it is possible to refuel starships in space. Refueling starships in space will be necessary to get out of Earth's orbit, as Starship uses all of its fuel to get there. Ship 28's fatal issue, though, ended up being a lack of roll control caused by valves freezing. When Ship 28 began entering the atmosphere, it continued to roll and ultimately lost all control. Ship 28 broke up over the Indian Ocean shortly afterwards. And that brings us to today. The fourth flight of Starship. The fourth flight will feature Ship 29 atop Booster 11, and if you are watching this video premiere, should be in around 1 hour and 10 minutes away. I procrastinated a lot during this video, and I cut it really close. Thank you for watching my first ever commentary video, and if you want more, feel free to give me ideas in the comments. I am off to watch Starship fly in an hour, so until next time.